show an explanation of how to use Powling's rule to explain bond dissociation energies, which is interesting because, of course, Powling used bond dissociation energies to come up with the electronegativities in the first place. So this is sort of doing it backwards, but it is essentially an exercise in algebra. So we have our expression where the modulus of the difference in electronegativities between the two um, atoms is equal to 0.102 times the square root of the value delta that we're interested in. And essentially this is the bit that relates the differences in electronegativity to the additional ionic contribution of the bond dissociation energy. And the reason for the form of this, um, in particular the reason for this constant here, is that we need to translate between the units of energy um, volts, or sorry, electron volts, which are the units that Powling was familiar with, and kilojoules per mole, which is the units that we use to describe bond dissociation energies. So essentially the formula that we're really interested in is this one here. And this is essentially saying that the energy of, for bond dissociation of the hydrogen bromide molecule is equal to delta, which is the ionic component, and the average of the bond, the covalent bond of hydrogen hydrogen and the covalent bond of bromine bromine. So this is, the, if you like, the covalent component and this is the ionic component. So the covalent component is very easy for us to calculate. We can calculate that as being essentially the average of the two covalent bond strengths. So that's 436 plus 193 divided by 2. So 314.5 is the bond strength that you would expect if the species was perfectly covalent. Now we need to factor in the ionic bit. And the way that we do that is basically working out what delta is. So I've rearranged this equation. So I've rearranged the equation in terms of delta. So we need to take the modulus of the difference. So this is 0.8 divided by 0.102, that conversion factor, and then square it. So it's about 7.8, 7.8 squared, 61.5. So 61.5 is the ionic component. We need to add that ionic component to the covalent component here, and we get the ground total of 376 kilojoules per mole. Now I could have put kilojoules per mole here and here, and I've been a bit lazy. We mustn't forget, we must never forget the units, and so it's in kilojoules per mole. Great.